Hey, Zane Griggs here. So, um, you probably saw the question, which type of exercise gives you the most bang for your buck, the most benefit for your time invested uh, when it comes to leaning out, when it comes to fat loss overall, and, uh, and less fat storage? Is it, is it steady state cardio, or is it strength training? Well, um, now some of you have probably spinning your head now. What's he gonna say? You know, what is this about? Well, you, you know, steady state cardio burns more. You're more in a fat burning zone. Um, strength training is more about building muscle, and that's more, car you know, more glucose driven. Um, going back and forth. Well, let me just tell you, it's it's more than just about calories in and calories out. Um, those that matters, but it doesn't. But how much you eat, okay, isn't as important as how much of what you're eating and it isn't as important as the hormones okay that are that are moving through your body and which which hormones are giving dominance in your system so it's much more about hormones than calories and all sorts of hormones okay so yes testosterone and estrogen play a huge role uh, growth hormone glucagon um, but the big one the one that trumps them all you know I mean it's but it's bigger than uh, your stress hormones like, uh, like epinephrine, uh, adrenaline, and cortisol. It's big. I mean, it's bigger than serotonin. It's insulin. Insulin is your primary fat storage, okay, hormone, and fat sort, and, and and really fuel storage hormone. Okay, so as far as glucose goes, uh, the carbs that we eat, the fuel that we eat, even protein stimulates insulin to some degree. So we can't avoid stimulating insulin at all. It's not natural. It's not healthy. We need insulin. We need insulin to feed our body. But the type of exercise that will help you control insulin the most is strength training. And I'll explain why. When your muscles become, you got, you got two states of, of cells. They're insulin sensitive or insulin resistant. And this is not just muscle cells, but it's also organ cells, your brain, your liver, your heart, okay, and fat cells. Okay, so if something is insulin resistant, that means they don't, it doesn't respond to insulin. Insulin cannot bring fuel to that cell and store fuel in that cell. Usually it's glucose. It can't bring glucose to that cell and store it there. Store it there. So if it can't, usually when it, when it can't get into the muscle cells, it takes it to the fat cells. If it can't get into the organs, you're really in trouble. Those organs start to not work well. Okay, so insulin resistance is what develops usually from eating too much sugar, uh, sometimes from too many um, uh, polyunsaturated fats, so the, the vegetable oils, but primarily it's, it's from sugar and starch and too much sugar and starch, not enough strenuous activity in the muscles. So when we stimulate the muscles through strength training, through something intense, something that, that, that would take anywhere from like say 30 to 60 seconds to fatigue in a particular set, um, you increase insulin sensitivity, which means it makes those cells more receptive to insulin, more receptive to the fuel being stored in those muscles. Now, I'm not talking about bodybuilding. Yes, this is how bodybuilding works on an extreme level with some other help many times, um, but really we're just talking about health of those muscles, the vitality of those muscles, storing fuel in those muscles so those muscles have the energy to work later on, give you energy when you need them, they've got fuel. Uh, the problem with many of our muscles is that because we've eaten a lot and we haven't really used them in an intense way and burned off that, that glycogen that's stored in there, um, they're full. And so when the glucose comes around, or the insulin comes around bringing the glucose, they say, sorry, we're full, you know, room at the end, uh, keep going, and it goes and stores in the fat cells. So by using those muscles, okay, in a more strenuous way than cardio does, okay, using with strength training, and strength training your whole body, okay? So when you use cardio, usually it's mostly what? The large muscle groups. So it's like legs, if you're doing a rower, it might be a little bit of back as well, back and, and arms. Um, those are great. But they're not on a level that you're fatiguing within, generally, with, in less than a minute, right? Your sets, you know, usually you're doing like 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, some of you an hour of steady exercise. And that's just, that really is, yes, it's important. You need to do some cardio for your heart. But as far as time invested, um, if you only have three or four hours a week to work out, then you're better off using most of that for strength training. Now, if you're working out eight or 10 hours a week, then yeah, I do three or four hours a week for strength training, move on to the, uh, move on and then get some, get some cardio in, different, different types, different levels, low, high intensity, uh, that's great. But most of us aren't getting eight or 10 hours of exercise in. Most of us don't have that kind of time for it. So, uh, for three or four hours a week, you know, 20, 40 minutes of cardio, it's fine. 
you know, three hours, spend it doing some strength training, increase your insulin sensitivity so that, um, and, and, and in, in combination with, if you want to do it, this a low carb diet, cutting out some of the starches so that when your body needs the glucose, needs the starch, uh, the fuel to replenish those muscles after a workout, you're giving them a little bit of glucose from your diet, but then when you're, when you're not feeding it enough of the, the glucose, enough of the starch, okay, it breaks down fat cells and insulin takes it from your fat cells, breaks down those triglycerides and takes that glycerin, turns it into fuel and the fat turns into fuel and feeds your muscles from your stored fat. So strength training not only helps you store the fuel that you're eating in those muscle cells, but also helps you break down the fat that you've stored and store it in those muscle cells as well. Because some of you heard of EPOC, okay, which is basically a delayed um, increase in metabolism after strength training, which you don't get from cardio because of the intensity of the strength training. Even though you may not feel like you're burning as many calories strength training, um, to, to restore the fuel in those muscle cells after strength training, your metabolism is ramped up and your body is trying to refuel those muscles for the rest of the day. Sometimes, depending on the intensity of your workout, anywhere from 8 to 24 hours after your workout, it's still trying to refuel those muscles from either what you're eating or stored fat. But really, it's about controlling that insulin. It's about keeping insulin sensitivity, working the whole body, so you have muscles all over your body, sensitive to insulin, ready to respond, which you're just not going to get from sitting on the bike and pedaling or getting on the elliptical trainer or the treadmill and doing 30 minutes of cardio from. You're just you're not going to burn off fuel from your upper back, from your shoulders, your arms, your pecs, and you're not even going to burn off all the fuel in your legs. Not like strength training, which is going to stimulate more muscle cells, open up through your nervous system, stimulate more muscle cells you might be uh, sleeping, dormant because you haven't been using them, and then drain the fuel that's stored in them and, and get them to, and your body, train your body to start fueling and storing its fuel in those newly awake muscle cells rather than the fat cells because it's just passing right by. They're saying, sorry, no room here. We don't need it. We don't need more energy because we don't use these muscles anyway. So just keep going, store it in the fat cells for later because we're gonna need those fat cells for when we're running or when we're on elliptical, or when we're sitting on the bike pedaling away reading the magazine. So uh, if you have any questions, feel free to post them below. But, uh, and you know someone that can benefit from this? Any uh, cardio queens out there who seem to be wearing themselves out but a little bit frustrated because they're not getting any leaner. They're just they might be getting smaller, but because they're burning off muscle, and that's usually why um, people tend to lose, you know, if they lose weight, about 25% of it's coming from muscle, which we don't want. So if you know anybody that's frustrated with this, Tag them in the comments below, and, and maybe they'll, they'll benefit from the message and, and ask me a question. And uh, if you're looking for help, talk to me. Send me a message. Talk to you later.